starts. Yep. So today we are talking about loans. What is a loan? What is a loan, Sabba Sila? What is a loan? A loan is when you borrow money. The money that we borrow is the principle of the loan. The reason that they give us a loan is what, Sila? Why do they give you a loan? Okay, so they give you a loan to make money. The reason we make money from the loan is because we have an interest rate and we pay interest payments. The way we calculate interest payments is simple. We take the amount of the loan that we owe at that particular time and we multiply that with the interest rate that yields the interest payment payment then if you make a payment what is happening you make a payment what is happening if you make a payment what is happening you pay the loan back besides the interest payment you pay money on part of the principal and these two parts the interest payment and the payment that goes towards the principal is the total payment of the loan. So every time we pay two parts, interest payment and pay for the principal. The total is the total payment of the loan whatever we have to pay the next period is when we take how much we pay from the principal and we subtract it from the existing principal so what we have is the next amount that we have is the previous principal minus the payment for the principal and these are the main ideas of the loans all the type of loans that we have in chapter 4 follow this particular pattern we have different categories page 1 25 on the BMCC edition says that we pay throughout the loan periods only the principal only the interest payment and the principal is paid once at the end we flip the page page 126 says another case in that other case, we take the amount of principal, we take the amount of principal, and we divide it with how many periods we have the loan. As a result, we have a fixed amount that we pay towards the principal. In the third case, we calculate a fixed payment and that fixed payment has two parts the interest and what it goes for the principal and this goes on throughout the case so all the loans have exactly 
the same pattern and the pattern doesn't change. The book gives you about eight different type of loans. Already I discussed the three first part of the loans, but all the loans follow the same pattern. What's the pattern? We borrow a given amount of loans. We borrow for a given rate and for a given period of time. That period can be larger, can be smaller. It's part of the loan deal. The interest rate can be higher, can be lower. The principle is how much money we get as a loan. The person that gives us a loan in return gets his money back and also gets interest payments because of the loan. Is this clear? <coughs> if this is clear, let's go on and see the loan in uh, pictorial terms. So I'm going to make pictures. The book doesn't have pictures. The book does give you only the Excel files. And the way the book has it is we think about number of periods are 10. And the rate is 8%. And the principal is $100,000. This is what we have in the book. And this is always the case that we have. We can be able to change all this pattern. So what is happening? If we get along, we can see it in two different ways. We can see it as the person that gives us the loan or as the recipient of the loan. I'm going to graph them in both ways because it's actually the same but the opposite graph. The person that gives us the loan gives a given amount, gets out of that pocket and expects given payments. And these payments are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Ten. I have the case here that in the book is in the third, third case. That case is that we have fixed payments. Fixed payments means that the payment is the same. But that particular payment has two parts. One part is how much I pay to repay back the principal. And another part is how much I pay for the interest of that particular loan. I go back to see the same case with what is happening to the person that gets the loan. The person that gets the loan has equal amount of money at the beginning. Here is outflows, he gives. Here is an inflow, you take it. And because you take it, you go back and you pay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You make ten payments and the loan is paid back. What is not in the book is the loan fair. The loan is fair if the amount of money that we borrow with the amount of money that we pay in present values is the same. So what do we want to do? We go back to the previous chapter. If this payment after a year, this payment after two years, this payment after three years, all the other payments are summed up at that particular 
point now in present value this present value of the future payments if it is exactly the same with the principal principal of the loan then the loan is fair and these principles these rules are with all type of loans that we have is this clear so if this is clear let's go on and see what is happening with the cases that we have <coughs> I want you to start an Excel file file. I'm going to do exactly whatever you have in your book, page 125. I'm going to put the numbers in exact the same position and we'll see what is going on. I'm going to enlarge it so we can see it clearly. So, cell B2 gives me the amount of the principal. I do not pay attention to decimal points. The next cell gives me the percent of the rate that I have for that particular loan. And then have one payment per year and I have 10 years I would like to mark all this with a given color because these actually are my control cells of whatever I have to do then on cell A8 I start to count the years On the cell B8, I go to whatever is the principle and I take that particular formula. So if the principle goes up or down here, a different number is there. On cell C8, I calculate how much is my payment for the interest. The payment for the interest is equal to whatever is the amount of the principal of that particular period multiplied to what is the rate. The rate is constant. I put the dollar sign to find the rate here. I do that again. In that case, I take the amount of the principal of that particular year and I multiply it to what is the interest rate. I will drag this information down. Therefore, that information should be locked in terms of rows. So it would be here. The amount that I pay for the principal in this case is zero because the case is that I will repay for the loan once at the end and the total amount that I have is equal to whatever I pay for the interest plus whatever I pay for the principal the remaining amount of the loan is what is my principal minus whatever I paid for the principal. Since I didn't pay for the principal anything, it's exactly the same amount. 
Professor, can you do the E8 again? What would, what would you do in E8? The E8 is the total amount that I pay, is the payment for the interest, cell C8, okay. and the payment for the principal, principal. cell D8. Wow. That's the total payment that I have here. The total amount that I carry as a loan is whatever is the principal minus whatever I pay. And I go to the second period. The second period is the first period plus one more. And the amount that I have here is whatever I had at the end of the previous period. This is all I need for all type of loans that I have to deal with. As long as I have it here, I drag that information further down. I make a correction. I take that as zero. I take all that information and I drag it for 10 periods. I drag it for 10 periods. And I have my total amount. I see what is happening with my loan. I specify what is happening. Here is the remaining principle. I take that information and I wrap. Here is my interest payment. Here is the payment towards the principal. Here is the total payment. And here is the principal to be paid in the future. I take all that information, I wrap it, I put it in smaller letters, and I go on to see what is happening with my loan. What is the critical point here? The critical point is at the last period, at the last period, I pay the total amount of principal that I have. As a result, by the 10th year, the loan is fully paid. Let's mark what I have here. I put one piece of information as a formula at this point here. I have formulas for these areas here. And I want you to know what is happening in all cases. If the loan is fully paid, at the end of the period, I have nothing to pay the loan is fully paid at that particular point. So is there a formula in the I'm going to go again to say what we have. We have the case of a loan that everything is paid at the end. Oh. Nothing we pay during that particular period. So the, the, between the period, we just paying the interest, right? We, we don't pay anything. We pay everything at the end, every time we pay the interest. This is what you have in your book on page 125. The principles that we have here 
are the principles we have in all loans, not change from a loan to a loan. Let's see why this happens. Every period, we pay interest based upon the amount of the loan that we have. Why we pay the same amount here? Because the principle doesn't change since we do not pay. The principle doesn't change. We do not pay. And the interest rate is the same. Therefore, a fixed interest rate on a fixed principle gives me the same payment throughout the years. What do I have? We carry the principal for 10 years. At the 10th year, we pay the total amount of the principal. As we pay the total amount of the principal, every year we pay only the interest. The last year, we pay the interest plus the principal. As we pay everything, the loan is fully paid. Yes, questions? Yeah. How did you get the payment towards the principal again? How do I get the payment towards the principal again? Type zero. Type zero and carry the zero throughout the case. And the principal to be paid in future is uh, it's adding the remaining principal? Correct. Correct. Okay. Look at the formulas from the book. Here I have a multiplication. I multiply the rate with the amount that I have here. Let's check a given point to see what is happening at the fourth year. Let's go at the fourth year. At the fourth year, we go and we take how much is the remaining amount of the loan at the previous year, the third year. The amount that we have here is whatever it comes up at that particular point. What is happening to the fourth year? At the fourth year, we pay interest. At the fourth year, we pay interest. How much is the interest that we pay? At the fourth year, we pay interest that is calculated on the amount of the loan that we have here, multiplied to the interest rate. At the fourth year, we do not pay anything against the principal. The total amount we pay is only for the interest. And I want to see what is happening in that case. So what do I pay? This is the total amount of money that I pay. Is this clear? Something that it's not in my book. I want to find out what is the present values of the total payments. The present values of the total payments is what? The present value of the total payments is my total payment discounted by one plus the rate. The rate is fixed not change it, to the power of that particular time. The time is going to be changed. We click it and we specify that this is dollars. So what is happening? We pay $8,000, but a year before, $8,000 is $7,400. I take that information and I will drag it all the way down. Before I do it, I double check to see if I get the correct information. I get the information, $8,000. Two years from now, with 8%, now it is $6,858. If this is correct, everything should be correct. I can give some space here, and I get that information. Which means what? $100,000 10 years from now with 8%, today is $50,000.
What do I want to see? I want to go up here and see if my summation of all these future payments in today's value would be $100,000. So if I borrow 100,000 and I pay back 100,000, that means that the, do that the loan is fair. I pay exactly the same that I get in today's value. Is this clear? No. If this is clear, this is what I have as my first page. <coughs> Make a notice. This is something that I do not see in my book. This is something extra that I give you. Yes. <coughs> I will repeat it in different terms. I want to check if Excel function would give me exactly the same payment. I will go here and I put the formula. I want the present value formula. I will go on and I'll get the present value formula. The rate is this one and the rate doesn't change across the years. The number of the periods is something that would change. And the future value that I have is also something that will change. I click it and I get this to be the amount that I have to pay. If I want that to be in positive terms, I will have the information that is in E8 as a negative. I have it all the way down. It is exactly the same information. In one formula, I'll take this out from here. I will paste it. This is with my own calculation. And this is with the Excel formula. <coughs> this is with my own calculation. And this is with my Excel formula. The numbers are exactly the same. The calculation is with a discounting process discounting $8,000 for nine years, discounted with a given rate, 8%. And for the 10th year, $100,000 plus $8,000 gives me $50,000. So $108,000 in 10 years from now is equal to $50,000 now. Another way you can be able to do it is you can use not only the present value formula, but the net present value formula that gives you the summation all the way. And this is what I would like you to mark here as the information in page 125. What is happening in 125? I want you to get a title. What is the loan type here? The loan time here, I get it as a section in the book 4.3. And 4.3 is an interest only loan. This is what I have as my first example. And I want to go to the next example. Is the next example anything different from the first one as a process? The answer is no. The process is the same. If the process is the same, 
then I would be able to copy and paste one case into the other case and make a change. I flip the page in the book. As I flip the page in the book, I see now I have a different type of a loan. What is the difference between the first loan and the second loan? The first loan I pay everything at the end. The principal is paid at the last period, the entire amount. The second type of a loan is that I pay the principal gradually, and I pay the same amount of the principal throughout all the time. I take all of my loan here, and I copy it. I go, and I paste it. <coughs> and as I paste it, I need to make the changes that I have. First change is to give additional space to all my columns so I can see all the formulas. Second case is that now 4.4 section is an equal amortization table of equal amortization. Equal amortization means what? The amount of loan that I have, I mark it a little bit different, related to how many periods I have, it gives me what should be the total payment. And I calculate my total payment here. My total payment is equal the payment, total payment that goes for the principal is equal to the total amount of the loan divided with how many periods I have. I see that's $10,000. I go here and I will put that amount as something that I pay every period for that particular loan. And that amount is throughout all the periods. As I said, I make the changes. What do I have? Did I pay the entire loan? This is the point that tells me what is happening. Did I pay my loan? At the 10th year, I have everything paid. If everything is paid at the 10th year, I want to see how it is paid. And I want to see what is the difference. Now, the big difference is this column here, this area here. What is happening between the previous case and this case here? In the previous case, I was paying everything at the end, all at once. Now I don't pay everything at the end. I pay everything a little by little. But as I paid everything a little by little, I have impact to what is happening to the remaining amount of the principal. Previously, the principal stayed the same. Now the principal is decreasing. As the principal is decreasing, affects what is happening to the interest payment. The interest payment also are declining because the principal is declining. And the total payment is decreasing. The reason that the total annual payment is declining is because the interest payment is declining on top of that part. As a result, I have to pay less amount of money every period. Since the last period I pay the $10,000 plus the $800 that is the interest for that, $10,800, this is what is the remaining to be paid, $10,000. The loan is fully paid. Is the loan fair? The loan is fair if the total payments 
in present value with 8% is exactly the same amount that I have before. My calculations and Excel calculations are giving me exactly the same amount. As a result, the loan is fair. As a result, I have two cases. And I want to see what is the difference between the two cases. <coughs> Case number one, the principal is paid only once at the end. Case number two, the principal is paid gradually, the same amount through every year. As a result, the interest payments are decreasing, and as a result, the total amount of money that I have to pay is going down. I take that information and I want to see, is this anything different from the previous case? No. What is the big difference? I don't have a big payment at the end. The payment is done in gradual terms. The present value of all the future value payments are adding up to the total amount of money that I have, which means that particular loan is also as fair as the previous case of the loan. This is my second case. This is what I have as in page 126. Page 126 is another case that has one difference from the previous one. And this difference is how I pay for the principal. The previous case, the principal is paid once at the end. The principal is paid once at the end. In this case, the principal is paid gradually and I have exactly the same amount for the principal that I pay all the time. Clear? What did I say at the beginning? From one case to the other case to the other case, the process of the loan is the same. If the process of the loan is the same, I'll go to page 128, case 4.5. It's the same. Same means that I will take that information, I will copy it, I will go on to the next one, and I will paste it. And as I will paste it, I have the next case. 4.5, now I have an equal payment. I'll have an equal payment. take this out and I have an equal payment. How do I calculate that equal payment? The equal payment is when I use this particular process and I take the present value of all that equal payments and I want to see what is that particular payment. Mathematically we cannot calculate it on our own, it's a little bit complex, I will use the formula that Excel gives me. And the formula that Excel gives me is I would calculate the payment. In order to calculate the payment, I need to use what is the rate. The rate is the same throughout all the periods. And I want to know how many periods I have. I have 10 periods and I would like to know what is the present value of that particular loan. The present value of that loan, the principal of the loan is $100,000. I take it and I get the payment. As I get the payment I make modifications to my Excel. In that case I know what is my payment. I take that particular payment and this payment now 
is the same throughout the 10 years. And I will make another modification. If I know how much is the interest and I know how much is the payment, now how much it goes against the principal is the payment minus how much is the interest payment. And this is how much it goes against the principal. That is going on throughout the periods. If I make the changes, the loan is paid. Automatically, I see something that is also important. As the loan is paid, in both cases, it's a fair loan. I pay exactly the same amount of money that I borrow in present values. But now, I have something that is different. I calculate what is my interest payment, and I carry that throughout all these periods. All these periods carry up the information that I have from here. And I make the other logical modification. Since now I know how much I pay for interest, and since now I know what is the total payment, and now the total payment is fixed. Previously, the payment for the inter for the principal was fixed. Now the total payment is fixed. The total amount that goes against the principal is the difference between these two. When you look at your book, the book now on page 128 makes a difference of the columns that is putting that information. Since I use the same pattern all the time, I keep the same columns for all that information. And I have it as it is here. And this way, I will go and I will discuss everything that is in this particular chapter page 128 because all this information tells me something very simple case by case by case do not have any difference in terms of a process the process is the same the only thing that is a different from one case to the other is how I will do the payments and let's go on and see the process. The process is that every time I pay interest on the amount of money that I owe at that particular period. This is going for the interest payment. And then I pay something that goes against the amount of money that I owe. That amount, together with the interest payment, is my total payment. I stop here and I want to see what's the difference between first, second, and third case that we are discussing right now. In the first case, every year I don't pay anything for the principal. I carry the total amount of lo the loan all the way to the end and I pay everything at the end. Second case, every year I pay the same amount proportionally throughout the years for the principal. And gradually I decrease my principal. But because gradually I decrease my principal, it's the same amount that I pay against the principal, the total amount that I pay every year decreases because I put something that is the same on top of what is the interest. The interest is calculated with the same rate but on less amount therefore it's becoming less. The third type of a loan, which is the most common, is when I have to pay the same total amount throughout all these years. But if it's the same total amount through all these years, then it is different between the interest and the payments that I have. Is this clear? Now I go on and I want you to look at page 129. 
On page 129, we use two different functions. And these two different functions calculate this particular information that I will mark it with blue. I would calculate the payment that is for the interest and the payment that is for the principal. And I will use for that not my own calculations, but I will use the specific Excel functions. In other words, this is what I will try to calculate again. I will put that information here. I will copy that and I will paste it. Here I will have my calculation. Here, I will put the Excel formulas. And the Excel formulas, as you see, is the interest payment and the principal payment that we have. This is on page 129. Should calculate exactly what I have here in blue. I go on and I find the interest payment. The interest payment is this function here. The interest payment has arguments. What is the rate? The rate is fixed. What is the period? The period is changing. But the number of the periods that I have is fixed. There are 10 periods. And I want to see what is the present value of my loan. The present value of my loan is what I have here. And that is fixed. I click it and I see what is happening. <coughs> I take off the decimal points and I see the interest payment that I calculate with the Excel function is exactly the same that I calculated here. I'll take it and I will test it for the next page. It's exactly the same as you can see it here. I will go on and I will use the next formula. The next formula that I have is the principal payment. the principal payment. The rate is fixed. And the number of periods varies. And the total number of periods stay the same. And the present value of the loan is something that also doesn't change from a period to a period it is the same. The number that I have here is exactly the same is exactly the same to the number that I have there. I take it and I test it. Again, I see what is happening. Now I calculate for the second period with 8% when the total periods are 10 and that's $100,000 which means if it's correct for the two periods, it should be correct for all the 10 periods. This is the information that I have in blue. I can calculate it in two different ways. I can do it in my own calculations, or I can do it directly with the other calculations. The total amount that I have to pay for the loan the total amount that I have to pay for the loan is how much it goes for interest plus how much it goes towards the principal. 
is exactly the same as this amount here. I will give it with a decimal point since now I want to see the complete information. This is the same that is throughout all the period and I want to see what is happening. What is this? This is the present value of all these future value flows. This is my payment. What is the difference between this payment and this payment here? Here I calculate how much the payment is and I distribute it. Here I calculate how much the parts of the distribution is and I add them up and I have the two pages in one because it's a different way to calculate. So page 128 and 129, they tell me something that is exactly the same, two different ways to calculate it. This way I know how to calculate everything for the loan. What did I have here? I review it. I have three different cases. Is anything different from a case to a case? And what is the difference from a case to a case? How I pay the loan. How do I pay the loan? Here I pay a fixed amount of loan all the time. What is the case of the previous situation? At the previous situation, I have to pay the same amount against the principal throughout all the years. And the total amount that I pay is the summation of what is going on against the principal plus what is going on against the interest. Whatever I pay for interest is the same or different? All the times is the same. Is the multiplication of the amount that I have to pay for the loan for that particular period multiply to the interest rate. Do I learn anything? One case and the other case and the third case actually are not completely different stuff that I need to start all over again. It's the same process. Which means if it's the same process, I want to know what is the difference from one situation to the other situation. And if I know that difference, then I would be able to utilize it so very fast I will finish the rest of the chapter. And I'll give you the idea of what is the rest of the chapter. The rest of the chapter is if you go to this particular case and you want to make a combination of the first and the third case. If you cannot pay $14,900 every month, but you can pay less. What is happening? If you cannot pay that amount of money, what is happening? You will have more of the principal to be accumulated all the way as a loan. Can you pay that at the end? If you can pay that from the end, you can make the next case that you have. Is anything different from the previous period? Not really. If it's not, I would like to copy that information and go on to the next case. This is what I have in the next case. What is going on in the next case? And I will review that again. Now I bring it to you as an example. But it's not anything different from one to the other. So what did I say? This is what I have as my fixed payment. And let's assume that I cannot pay $14,000. I can pay less than $14,000. How much is the less of $14,000? Let's say that I would pay 
$12,000. If every year I can pay only $12,000, what is happening? If every year I pay only $12,000, what is happening? I cannot pay 14, I can pay 12. I take that part and that is equal to all the periods. For the nine years, I will pay only $12,000. But at the last period, I will pay the total amount of principal that is done. What is going on here? I make one change, like the first case. And I make few other changes here that every year I will pay less. And this is the next case. Is anything different from the previous two? Or I utilize the two cases to make that stuff. So what is happening here? Every year I pay the total amount of money this is less than my payment, as long as at the last period I will pay all the remaining amount of the loan. Yeah. How this comes out? From here. From here. From here. This is how much is the remaining of every period. We said the next period we have to pay whatever is carried from the previous period. This is coming from here because this cell takes the information from this cell here. And after that, we drag everything down. This cell is exactly the same as this cell. That means at the end of the first year, we have to pay $96,000. At the beginning of the second year, this is what we owe. We calculate interest on that amount. As we calculate interest on that amount, and we pay only $12,000, then the remaining part of the principal is the difference between these two. How much is coming up from the principal? Ninety-six minus $4,320, that's the remaining amount. And that carries out. Is anything different if you cannot afford to pay 12,000 and you have to pay 10? Or you have to pay less? From that point on, the only thing you can be able to do is change that particular number. If you can pay only $10,000, every period, this is what is happening. And you can go on through the same logic and finish the chapter. If you cannot pay that amount, can you pay only $8,000? I'm not hitting enter yet. What is $8,000? Only the principal. That brings you to what is the first case. That brings you to what is the first case. What is the first case? You pay only interest, and you pay the entire amount at the end. But now, let's continue with the logic we had before. What's the logic we had before? What if every year, you want to pay less than $8,000, you want to pay less than $8,000, and pay everything at the end. Let's decrease it by 1000 If you pay $7,000, what is happening? That's what is happening? Why, why is $14,903? That doesn't matter, right? <coughs> Let's see what is happening here. This is how much you have to pay for the interest. You are paying less than the interest. That means what? 
the difference between these two becomes negative. That means that you borrow money on the loan that you have. And as you borrow money on the loan that you have, at the end of the period, you pay the total amount that is carried out. Is carried out because this is what you have. You pay everything. Can you decrease it even further? If you decrease it even further, it's equivalent as if you borrow because you have a loan. And that means that it's going to be increasing. If that would go on, you go all and see what is going on. What if you can pay $5,000? You can pay $5,000. That means that you borrow more money as the payment of the loan is coming up. And that means that at the end, you have to pay much more money. Is it a fair case? The fair case is something that we see here with the total present value payments. The present value payments are exactly the same what we have as a loan. The loan is paid. We can calculate the payments in different terms. And as we have that case, we go to the last case scenario, the bullet loan. What is the bullet loan? If you pay nothing throughout all the periods, if you pay nothing and you carry on calculating loans, at the end you have that particular case. We will go on slowly and we'll see what is happening as long as we go to the most common case. Sorry. As long as we go to the most common case we pay a fixed interest. We pay with a fixed payment. And this is what is happening. <coughs> Variations of that. One variation is if the interest for the loan is not fixed. And as we go on, the interest can go up or down. And that's not in your book that you have, but it's easy to calculate. You calculate things with different interest as things are going up or down. Another calculation could be if you go on and you have more periods or less periods. What is happening with the loan? And now I will go on and I will ask you to tell me something that is quite common. I want you all to go to another case. This is the next options and I want you to do homework if you want to do a homework I'll go on to this particular case and look for what is going to happen if you take for five years your information and you go on and you paste it here and you want to go Take that part for five years. Copy and paste it for five years. For five years, I want you to go on and buy a car. The car is $30,000. The interest rate that you want to buy a car, let's say it's 4%. If it is 4%, you would like to know what is the annual payment for that car loan. And the annual payment for that car loan is this amount that you have. What is happening? As the years are going down, you pay from the loan. What do you have every year? At the end of the year, you make a payment. Part of that payment goes for the interest. Part of that payment it goes towards your principal. The total amount that you pay is this amount. What is happening at the end of the fourth 
at the end of the fifth year, you paid for your car. But as you pay for the loan, what is happening with the car? This is the value of the loan. And the value of the car also is decreasing. What I want you to be able to do, that's what we're going to do in the next chapter, to find out the depreciation of the car. How much is the car valuable after one year, two years, three years? And you want to see what is going on. What is the real situation that we are facing? Let's say that at the third year, let's say that at the third year, you want to go and sell the car. And as you want to go and sell the car at the end year, you want to go to the bank and clear that value. Buy back all the amount of money that you have as a loan for your car. So this way you will change the loan and you're gonna be free to go on and pay that amount of money to the bank and find out. That's one problem that we have. Another problem that we can have is what is going to happen if you take this particular loan that you had and you want to negotiate a differentiation of the time period of the loan. Do you want to have the loan paid shorter or longer period and if you would like to pay the loan in a less period then you increase your payment if you want to pay the loan in longer period then you will decrease your payment and these are the two other alternatives that we have to deal with the loan but the most important part is to have something in our mind Thinking about loans, the process is the same for all type of periods, all type of options that we have. What is the main idea? The main idea is that we pay interest on the amount of the loan that we have as a principal at that time, and we pay against the principal and we pay for the amount of money that we borrow interest. It's the total amount of money that we have, the sum of the two. We can calculate that particular case automatically to tell me what is happening with the case. If I pay exactly the same amount throughout the period, why do we use that? And that's the most common case because that's something that I can be able to have as an easy way to plan my finances because the other ways they make some changes if this is the case i want to know what is happening what is happening at the end i pay the entire amount and at the end of the period nothing is owed furthermore second is it a fair deal the fair deal is if I take my payments and I calculate the present value of the payments in my calculations or in Excel calculations. If the total is exactly the same to the amount that I borrow, it's a fair deal. Is any difference from one type of a loan to the other? The answer is no, all of them are fair based upon how we would like to do it. Is there any other ways that I can calculate the payments for the interest and the payments for the principal? Yes, I can use the Excel formulas. And the Excel formulas would give me that calculation. And this is the way that I will move to calculate all different type of loans that I have, and that particular case is what I want to have for today. And I save my work, and you save your work. And that is what 
whatever I have as my class for today. Do we have any questions?